Hi, this is Mrs. Zhu, and we are working on our practice chapter 6% test. Our test is tomorrow. We will have two days to work on the test since tomorrow is a short day. So come prepared. Have this done by tomorrow. We'll go over all the answers, and we will start our test on tomorrow. All right, let's start with number one. The sweater is originally going to cost us $37.50, and we have... Moesha that is buying it at 20% off so she's saving some money now the question that is being asked here can I light it how much was deducted from the original so really I'm only finding the discount price so what I need to do is I always want to find the percentage of the cost so a part of the entire amount so a part of would be the 20% I always want to change that to a decimal, so I'm going to take the decimal, and since I'm taking a part of something, of gives me a clue that I need to multiply, so I'm going to take the decimal and multiply with the price. So I'm going to take 20%, remember that 20, I'm going to move the decimal, 2 to the left, so it's going to be 0.2, I'm going to multiply that with the $37.50, so if I take 37.50 and multiply it by 0.2, then I will get A, and that's all I need to do. Make sure you remember how to multiply with decimals without a calculator. Even though I will give you a calculator onto tomorrow's test, you won't always get one for the state test. All right, let's look at number four. Marl, he's borrowing $200. His interest, simple interest, is 12%. He's borrowing it for one year. He doesn't make any payments, so he's not going to pay it until the year ends. So we're looking for the interest. The formula for interest would be I equals, do you remember? Good, it's P times R times T. Remember that I stands for interest. The P stands for our principal, which is our original amount. So check out note seven, if you forgot. We're going to multiply it by the rate, which is your percentage that you have to change to a decimal. And then the T is your time, and the time is always measured in years. So here we go. How much did he originally borrow times the rate times the time? So it's all given there. It's going to be the 2,000 he borrows times the 12%, which is 0.12, times the time, which is after one year. Multiply all that together. In your calculator, you get D. Without a calculator, you would get 200 times 0.12, which is 2400, and the decimal moves back twice because there's two spaces and 0.2. So from the back, we're going to 1, 2, and that's going to end up the decimal after the 4, so $24. Let's look at number 5, Tamika. She's getting paid a 12% commission. Remember, a commission is similar to a tax. Now, a commission, usually people that earn commissions, I'm sorry, similar to a tip, usually people who earn commissions are like realtors, people who sell products like Mary Kay, you know, jewelry, cosmetics, salesmen um, for cars or maybe furniture. Sometimes they can earn an extra little like tip or commission. So they make a percentage of their com total salary. So com Tamika's earning 12%. So she's earning a 12% of the $3,740 that she made in sales. So of is your keyword to multiply. So I'm gonna take the 12% and change it to a decimal, 0.12. And we're going to multiply that with 3740 That is going to give us $448.80 in our calculator. Now we're rounding to the nearest dollar, so we're just going to get B. Now the reason it's not a D is because it's not her total, it is just what she earns in commission. So we have to really read the questions carefully when we do our tests because sometimes they may ask for the total, but sometimes it's just the discount, like one, number one. And here is just the commission. So it's like that extra tip that she makes.
Okay, on the back side, let's look at number six. We're looking at the fastest printer. So here we have each of the printers listed. Um, some of them are listed per second, like the first two, and the last two are listed per minute. So what we could do is we can change them all to per second so it's easier to compare which one is fastest. So let's go ahead and change these two to minute to seconds. So if I have 160 pages in two minutes, well two minutes is the same as two minutes times 60 minutes, sorry, 60 seconds in a minute. So two times 60 is 120 seconds. So I'm going to divide 160 by 120. And that'll give me 8 over 1.3 repeating pages per second. 1.3. Well, right now, between RoboPrint and Voltron, or well, Voltron is printing one page every two seconds, which means it only prints half a page per one second, which is definitely not as fast as two pages per second, so we're going to cross out that one. Vantech is printing 1.3 pages per second, so it's still not as fast as RoboPrint. And then we're going to calculate 100 pages per minute. 100 pages per minute would be the same as 100 pages in 60 seconds. So I'm going to take 100 and divide it by 60. That's going to be 5 over 3, and that's going to be 1 and 2 thirds. So that's still not as big. It's only 1.6 repeating pages per second. So it's still not as fast as RoboPrint. So A is our answer. Now I don't have to convert to per seconds. I can change any part of the question to anything that I can compare equally per minute if you want to, but you'll still find out that RoboPin is the fastest. Uh, let's look at eight. Eight I know sounds quite confusing because of the language. It calls the job that they do a 24 person hours, um, but they're assigned three workers. So basically it takes 24 people to do a job. And so if there's three workers, basically how, long will it take them? So if there's three people working instead of just one, then that 24 person job divided by three means that it's going to just only take eight hours. So that's A. Okay, for number nine, you're going to set your problem up in a proportion. So we're going to create these two fractions and make them equal to each other. Based on the amount of money that they're converting, we've got six cents for one lumpure. So that's six cents for one lumpure. And I want to know how much dollars for 300 lumpures. So when you get your answer here for x, whatever you get, you need to change it to dollars. Okay, so whatever you get in your calculator, you should get 1,800, 1,800 pennies is the same as how many dollars? Yeah, it's C, eighteen dollars. There we go. Let's look at number ten, following page. We have Stuart. He's buying a pair of jeans. The jeans is costing him forty dollars. Now it's on sale for twenty percent off, and then he also has to pay a tax of eight percent. That's normal. So we want to know the sale price of the jeans. Now the sale price is what he ends up paying. Okay, so let me, um, I need a little space to work on this question. So we've got the $40, I've got 20% off, so that means I'm gonna take 20% of the $40, which means I'm gonna take 0.20 and multiply it with 40. That is going to give me $8. So first, I'm going to save $8. So my sale price is going to be the $40 minus the $8. So I'm going to pay $32 for the pants. However, I have to now, I have to pay an 8% tax. Okay, so now I'm going to find 8% of 
of the $32. So take eight and change it to a decimal. The decimal for 8% would be 0 0.08. So we're gonna take that and multiply it with the $32. Then what I will get is um, $2.56. So I'm gonna take that as a tax and then add it to the $32. So my total becomes $34.56, which is letter B. Um, I'm going to skip 11. I'm going to go to 12. On number 12, we see that Juanita, she is making 36 for 3 hours. Okay, And we want to know at that rate, how long would she have to work to earn $720? So I can write a proportion. And if I do, I'm going to write two fractions. The first fraction that I can create would be that rate, the $36 for three hours, which would be 36 over three. Actually, 36 over three is the same as 12 over one. That basically means that she makes $12 for one hour. So that's hours in the denominator. So you can take any of those two fractions. But the key thing here is to simplify the fractions and to have smaller numbers. So you just we could just take 12 over 1. And that's equal to, on the other fraction we create, is also going to be dollars over hours. And since I'm looking for how long, I don't know how many hours, so that's my x in my denominator. And then I want to make $720 in my numerator. Okay, so then I would cross multiply. So I would cross multiply the x times the 12. And if you didn't use 12, you would multiply x with the 36. And that would give me 12x. And then I'm gonna multiply one with 720, which is 720. Then put your equal sign in the middle. Then to find x and isolate that, I'm gonna take the 12 and do the inverse, which is division, so I'm gonna divide by 12. So x is gonna be 12 divided with 720, which gives me 60 hours. For number 13, it would be best to also use a proportion, which I'm going to skip that question for now and move to a different question. I'm going to work down on the next page. Let's try 16. For 16, I'm also going to use a proportion. In this question here, when I set up my proportion, I've got two things I'm comparing. That's how you create your fractions. You compare two things. Just like number 12 that we just did, we compared his money that he made per hour. So here we've got the ounces of seeds compared with how large the lawn is. So I'm going to use my numerator as the ounces of seeds. So we know that if 40 ounces of grass seed will seed this large of a lawn, 2,400, then I'm going to write a fraction like that. I can even simplify this fraction, like get rid of the zeros. It's not going to change the number that I have, but the numbers can become smaller so that it's easier to work with, especially if I don't have a calculator. Okay, um, I'm gonna make that equal to the second fraction. And again, in my numerator, I'm gonna have ounces of seeds. So since I don't know how many ounces of seeds that I need, I'm gonna put an X. I'm gonna put that over the s amount of lawn that I have to put seeds on. Now I need to seed both of the lawns. Both of the lawns that I have, one of them covers 3,000 square feet and the other covers 42,000 square feet. So I just need to add them together to get the total for both lawns, which is going to give me 7,200. So there's my proportion. And I got rid of these zeros already. And in fact, I am now just going to cross multiply. So I'm gonna multiply 72 with four, okay? And then multiply 24 with X. When I cross multiply, I'm gonna get 7,200 times four and then I'm gonna end up dividing by that by 240, and that will equal to my x, which what I did in the calculator, I did get answer letter C. Okay, and you might wanna check your work for 18 and 19, I just wanna give you the answers A and then B, so that you can check your work for those two, which aren't too bad, not hard. 17 is D, and 20 is D as well. And then if we go back to the front, since I have a little bit of time before it runs out on me, number three was C, number four was D, number five is B, number two is B, 